good day. So today, ang pag-uusapan naman natin or ang ituturo ko sa inyo yung mga application ng properties ng parallelogram. Now, kung nung nakaraan ay si trapezoid na may one pair of parallel sides, si parallelogram naman has two pairs. Ibig sabihin, yung opposite sides niya ay parallel at hindi mag intersect kahit i-extend mo. Ito yung distinct characteristics niya dun sa mga nauunang quadrilateral. Okay? So, let's start with the application. First figure, um, find, or given this parallelogram, find angles and sides in the parallelogram above. Yan. So, we have given natin, ito is 60 degrees, and then itong 20 is the measurement or the length of the um, this side or one of the sides of the parallelogram. Now, para ma-solve yan, Diba, alam natin that consecutive angles in a parallelogram are supplementary, meaning the sum must be 180. So, kung meron na tayong 60, we can easily determine the, um, the measure or the degree measure of angle X. And so, since they are consecutive, ibig sabihin, that angle or angle X plus 60 must be equal to 180. Now, to solve for the measure of angle X, syempre, subtract both sides or additive inverse ng 60 is negative 60. So, magiging makakansan na yan. And then, 180 minus 60, that's to 120. So, ibig sabihin, 120 yung length, ay yung degree measure ng angle X. Next, opposite angles in a parallelogram are congruent. So, ibig sabihin, equal. Equal yung supat. Ngayon, sino ba ang ka-opposite ni 60? Diba si y? Ito yung ka-opposite niya. So, kung ang supat niyong given ay 60 degrees, ang measure din ng angle y ay 60 degrees. Kasi nga, pareha sila ng supat. Next, si angle z ay opposite naman ni angle x. Meron na tayong measure or degree measure ng angle x. So, angle z is 120 degrees. Next, ito naman tayo sa double w. Ito. Now, Angle Z and angle W form a linear pair. Meron tayong tinatawag na linear pair. Ibig sabihin nun kasi um, pag nagkaroon tayo ng straight angle, ang length niyan or ang degree measure niyan is 180 degrees. So, ibig sabihin, kapag nag-draw tayo ng segment dito, oh, sorry, ng ray dito at nakaform tayo ng dalawang angle, pag pinag-plus mo yan, itong angle na to at saka ito, 180 pa rin dapat ang result. So, ibig sabihin, si angle Z and si angle W ay linear pair. So, 180 degrees. Eh, meron ka ng degree measure ng C. So, ibig sabihin, yung W mo ay 60 degrees. So, meron na tayong 60 degrees as the degree measure of W. And then, last na letter is letter U. Si U ay length ng side ng lower base ng parallelogram. Eh, since ang karakteristik ng parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent, ibig sabihin, U is also 20. So, these are the measurements of the unknown variables in the parallelogram. Okay? How about this one? So, find the value of R, S, and T in the figure below. Now, meron tayo ditong R, tapos itong yung 120 natin na given, at saka yung 20 natin na given dito. Now, to solve for R, S, siyempre kailangan natin i-apply yung characteristics ng mga parallelogram. Una, now, diba, since this is a parallelogram, so opposite sides are parallel. Yan. So, meron tayo, parallel yung taas, and then, alternate interior angles are congruent. If you're going to um, apply yung parallel lines cut by a transversal, kapag, diba, since parallel itong dalawa, kapag itong line na to, yung diagonal, that will serve as the transversal. Ibig sabihin, kapag meron tayong transversal line, Yan, di ba parallel? Yan. Since meron tayong transversal line, automatic yon may mga karakteristik yun. Halimbawa, alternate interior angles are congruent. Ibig sabihin, yung 20 na to, ang ka-alternate interior niya yung R. So, ang measure ng R ay 20 degrees. Ganun lang kasimple. Next, meron na tayong S na lang tapos yung T. If you're going to look at that shaded part, ibig sabihin, di ba, pag triangle, the sum must be equal to 180. Yun yung pinakang rule natin. The sum of the interior angles um, of a triangle is always equal to 180. 
So, kung meron na tayong 120, tas may 20, pag pinag-plus natin 140, and then additive inverse ng 140, then subtract 180 minus 1, by 140, so magiging 40 degrees. So, yung S natin ay 40 degrees. Pasensya na, takpan. Yan, 40 degrees. Meron na tayong S. And then, yung angle P naman, kung titingnan natin, di ba, may linear pair tayong tinatawag. So, may 120 ka na dito, ang katabi niya ay unknown. So, paano? Di ba dahil nga supplementary ang linear pair, so dapat 180 pag pinag-plus. So, additive inverse ng 120, then 60 when subtracted. So, there are, ayan, so the degree measure of D is 60 degrees. Pero na tayong R, S, and D. So, that's just how you get the degree or the unknown measures, the degree measures in a parallelogram. Next, KLMN is a parallelogram with KL50, Ayan, KLMN, 50, LM is 4Z plus 32. Ayan, hindi siya exact measurement. MN is 4X minus 2. Ito, yung baba. And NK is 6Z. Ayan. So, find or what is the value of X, Z, and the measure of LN. Ayan. Ano yung LN? Okay, let's start with, ayan. In a parallelogram, alam natin that opposite sides are congruent. So, ibig sabihin, itong colored na to, yung purple, congruent dapat siya, tsaka yung orange. To solve, i-equate natin yung 50 at tsaka yung 4x minus 2, dapat dahil nga equal sila, and then additive inverse ng negative 2 is positive 2. So, add to both sides para makancel yung negative 2. So, magiging 52 na siya equals 4x, then divide both sides by 4, Laging ano yan na, kung ano yung katabi ng x, doon i-divide. x is equal to 13. Next. Um, 4z plus 32 is equal to 6z, kasi nga, congruent sila. And so, additive inverse ng 4z, bakit? Kasi, parehas naman z to. So, ibig sabihin, sila yung kailangan natin i-combine. Okay? Now, ang nag-adjust yung mababa, ito yung kinuha natin ng additive inverse para positive yung maging result natin. Okay? So, para makancel siya, then, magiging 2Z na lang siya equals 32, and the answer is um, 16. So, that's how you get the value of Z. Kaso, kailangan natin ng exact measurement. Um, find LM. So, this is LM. LM. Nawali lang. LM, di ba, is 4Z plus 32. If you're going to get the exact measurement, isasubstitute mo yung value mo na 16 doon. So, magiging 4 times 16 plus 32, then we have 64 plus 32, or LM is 96. So, ibig sabihin, the exact measurement is 96. Dito, alam natin ang exact measurement dito, 50. Kasi nga, 50 na ito eh. So, equal siya. So, kung, um, kung ipaprove natin kung tama yung 96 dito, di ba, we have 16 as the value of Z, times 6 natin, 36, 3, 9. So, 96 pa rin talaga. So, okay naman. Next, RSTU is a rectangle. Okay. Kung nagkotatanong kayo, rectangle is a parallelogram. So, parallelogram pa rin to. Under pa rin siya. RSTU is a rectangle. RQ is 7x plus 3 and 9x minus 3 is um, QT. Yan. Kung, kung tatandaan natin, ang rectangle po ay binabisect nila yung diagonal. So, ibig sabihin, itong diagonal na to, hinahati niya yung malaking diagonal into two congruent parts. Same with this. So, equal sila lahat. Okay. So, yung RQ natin is 7x plus 3. Ito yon yung maliit na to. And then, yung QT natin is 9x minus 3. Ito yung QT. And since equal sila, so pwede natin silang equate. Then, magta-transpose tayo dito. So, ang mag adjust yung 7, kasi nga mababa yung value. So, additive inverse ng 7x and negative 7 para makancel. Opposite sign yung additive inverse. inverse. Then, ito magiging... 2x. Ayan. So, meron pa tayo natirang 3, tapos yung negative 13 dito. E di ba kailangan, yung negative 13 mapunta dun sa kabila. So, we need to get the additive inverse of negative 13. That's why we add 13 to both sides. So, makakancel na siya. And then, 2x is equal to 16. Pag pinag-plus. Then, divide both sides by 2. x is equal to 8. So, this is the value of x. But we do not have the exact measurement na. Now, hahanapin natin si QS. Si QS po ay ito. Dahil nakita nyo naman kung gruwin, so ibig sabihin, kahit alin dyan, pwede kong isubstitute yung value ng X. So, try natin kay RQ. 
di ba ang x natin is 8. So, 8 times 7, 56 plus 3. So, that's 59. So, ibig sabihin, 59 po ang sukat nito. 59 na din yung the rest of the bisected diagonal. So, 59 lahat. Dahil nga congruent silang apat. Okay? Let's rectangle. Next. DEFG is a square. Yes. Square is a parallelogram. DG is 5x plus 5. Yan. Alam natin na ang square ay merong apat na pare-parehas na sukat ng side. So, pwede natin siyang i-equate. So, 5x plus 5 equals 7x minus 19. Additive inverse ng 5 kasi mas mababa siya. So, siya yung kukunin natin para makancel. Then, we have 2x tapos negative 19 ibinaba lang. Tapos, kailangan mawala nito dito. So, kailangan natin kunin ng additive inverse which is positive 19 para makancel siya. And then, we add 5 and 19, that's 24, tapos bring down 2x. Then, divide both sides by 2, we'll get x is equal to 12. And then, the length of each side, you can choose dito sa dalawa, yung pagsasubstitutan mo ng 12. Okay? So, if we're going to have dg, 5 times the length or the value of x, then we have 60 plus 5 and that's 65. So, ibig sabihin, 65 na lahat ang bawat isa. And lastly, sa trapez, dito naman tayo sa rhombus. Rhombus po, um, since the angle is 25x plus 15, sa rhombus po kasi ano, um, congruent sides din lahat, pero yung, yung diagonal niya, perpendicular. So, ibig sabihin, nagpo-form siya ng 90 degrees. Yan. So, pwede nating i-equate yung 25x plus 15 sa 90. Para mawala siya, itong 15, additive inverse. Yan, negative 15. Para makancel na siya. Tapos, 90 minus 15, that's 75. And then, divide both sides by 25, kasi nga 25, then cancel, x is equal to 3. So, yun lang, ganun lang yung value. Para lang ma-prove natin na 90 siya. 25 times 3 is 75 plus 15 is equal to 90 degrees. So, check naman yung ginawa natin ng value ng x. So, that's it. Thank you. If you have a question, feel free to email me and subscribe to my channel and like this video. Thank you.